Hi, I'm Guy Kawasaki. I am in California right now, and I want to talk to you today about remarkable e-commerce. It's the future of marketing with technology. My background in technology is, man, it's, it's longer than I want to remember. I used to be the software evangelist of Apple, and I started some software companies, and then I became chief evangelist of Apple. Then I started other things, and now I am the chief evangelist of Canva. I hope you use Canva. And I'm also the host of the Remarkable People podcast, where I interview all kinds of remarkable people from all over the world about how they became remarkable and what lessons can they communicate to others. And I'm happy to be here because I am in awe of your results. So my congratulations to Flipkart and all its partners. It's a mind-boggling number, 500 million subscribers or users. That is a big number. That is, that's like everybody in the United States times two. OMG, that's a lot of people. Congratulations. So I'm in California, and I know I'm making this speech. And, you know, there's this temptation that you're sitting in Silicon Valley and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to tell these people about the future of tech and marketing. But I happen to believe that information is so well spread out these days that it's not like I know something that you don't know. It's not like I have a front seat to something that you don't have a front seat to. And so I don't really want to say, okay, I'm going to let you in on the secret. This is what's going to happen in two, three, four, five years in e-commerce because frankly, I don't think that would be truthful or sincere or I don't know. It's just, it's too arrogant and you know, the Silicon Valley is not the center of the universe. So I thought that would be, what would be much more valuable for you is not so much these kind of predictions by some pundit visionary sitting in Silicon Valley. Instead, I want to talk to you about some techniques so that you will always be up to date, cutting edge, innovative, revolutionary, and remarkable. Okay, these are five techniques that you can use, well, I don't know about forever, but for a very, very long time, all right? Five, five things. So let's talk about them. The first is if you want to be remarkable in e-commerce, really in anything, any kind of company, service, product, you need to alleviate pain. Alleviating pain is a very good way to stay in touch with your customer and the future. I get migraine headaches. I hope none of you get migraine headaches. But the nature of a migraine headache is it feels like someone is pounding a nail into your head. You, you just want to curl up in a ball and go to sleep and hopefully you wake up and it's gone. Anyway, it's painful. And I'll tell you something, when you have a migraine headache, you, you will do or pay or whatever, almost anything to get that pain alleviated. And that's the kind of thing you need to look for. Look for pain. Think of the headache sufferer. You know, in Silicon Valley, we have this dichotomy of, well, there's painkillers and there's vitamins. And you know what? Investors entrepreneurs, we're looking for pain. We're looking for painkillers, not vitamins. Vitamins are something like, it's good to take, it's nice to take, it'll make you, you know, happier, better looking, whatever. But it's not pain. It's not pain. It's a supplement. And I'm telling you, the way to stay in touch with innovation is look for pain and alleviate it. Number two, Number two is that you should work backwards from your customers, not forwards from what you do. So what many people do, what many companies do, is they work forward. 
We like to do this. We're good at doing this. We've been doing this for a long time. So we want to continue to do this. And in order to continue to do this, we have to find people who will buy whatever we're making. Working backwards is quite different. Working backwards means that instead of focusing on what you like to do, you look at what people need and you work backwards from them and you fill that need. I'll give you a, what I consider a really great negative example. So believe it or not, in 1975, Kodak, yes, Kodak, invented digital photography. Ah, let's take a moment here and think about that. Kodak invented digital photography in 1975. How many of you are using a Kodak digital camera today? Zero, right? Well, I think the problem was that Kodak continued to work forward. We're a chemical company. We put chemicals on paper. We put chemicals on film. That's what we do. Instead, they should have worked backwards. Work backwards from the people buying Kodak film and Kodak prints and Kodak cameras. What did they want to do? They wanted to preserve memories. So Kodak was in the business of preserving memories, not in the business of chemicals. And if they had worked backwards, they would have figured out that, yes, right now, we're using chemicals and paper and film. But what people want from us is a way to preserve memories. And a digital sensor is so much better for helping people preserve memories. Now, admittedly, when they invented this camera in 1975, I think it was 10 pounds. It was like 100 pixels. Uh, you know, there are a lot of problems. Don't get me wrong. So it's not like they got the final, you know, digital camera and tiny and light and you know, all the chips and memory and everything was in place. None of that is true. So you have to slide them a little bit of a break that it would have been a lot of work to get it to where it is today. But, but, that's not to say it would have been impossible because obviously some people have done it. Sony has done it. Nikon has done it. Canon has done it. Fuji has done it. My God, even Leica has done it. So it could have been done. It could have been done if you work backwards from what people need as opposed to forward from what you like to do. Number three. Number three is that to truly understand what innovations are wanted, the way you work backwards is you go and see what your customers are doing. It's not because you've read a report or you, you have some kind of, you know, executive dashboard. You actually, you go to the factory, you go out into the world and you see what people are doing. Even better than going and seeing is going and being. I'll give you a great example. One of my friends is named Martin Lindstrom, and he was hired by a pharmaceutical company. And the pharmaceutical company said, we want to get closer to our customer. Oh my God. When you hear a company say, we want to get closer to our customer, usually they want a very expensive other company to do surveys and focus groups and all that kind of stuff. Let me give you a better example. So my friend took these pharmaceutical executives and put them in a room and he gave them straws and he made them breathe out of the straws. And needless to say, it was uncomfortable. And many people kind of questioned like, why are you putting us through this? Why are you making us breathe through straws? What does this have to do with getting closer to the customer? Well, if you think about it, his point was, we're a pharmaceutical company. And guess what? Many people have asthma. Now you understand what it's like to have asthma. It is as if you are breathing through a straw every day, every minute of your life. That's a great example of going and being. So I hope all of you, you should surely be using 
e-commerce. You got to be the e-commerce customer, whether it's Flipkart or if you are partner Flipkart, are you actually using what you sell Flipkart? You have to understand and be Flipkart. And if you're Flipkart, you have to go and be the customer buying your service, buying your products, using your site. Go and see, go and be. Number four. Number four is, and I tell you something, this is my experience for building great innovation and in fact, building great companies, which is that you should build what you want to use. Now, this is one path to innovation. Obviously, you can work backwards. You can go and be, you can go and see, you know, all the market research. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that kind of stuff. I'm giving you another path because sometimes, sometimes when you truly want to jump to the next curve, when you want to break from the present and get to the future, sometimes the best path is what do I want to use? And then build what you want to use. How do I want this site to work? What feature could I use? What is something that is just not being provided by somebody? And I'll tell you something. Apple is an example of this. Because when the company started in the mid-70s, it wasn't like there was a proven market for personal computers. Trust me. Arguably, there wasn't even a proven market for mainframe computers. So what did Steve Wozniak do? Do you think he read some big study that predicted the future of personal computers? Absolutely not. He built the computer that he wanted to use. He wanted a personal computer. He wanted a computer that was small, that was cheap, that was easy to use, that he didn't have to work for a large company, the government, or an educational institution. He built the Apple I because he wanted to use it. So this can work very well. It's the story of many, many Silicon Valley tech successes. Many billionaires were created because they built what they wanted to use as opposed to what they thought other people wanted to use. And so this is an alternate path. Again, not replacing market research, but supplementing market research. I, I would also tell you that you can build what you want to use, and once you get it out there, then you can also listen to your customer telling you what to do with what you've built. The point is, build what you want to use, and then honestly, honestly, just hope you're not the only one. Number five. Number five is to ride the tide. You know, the floating boat, no, excuse me, the floating boat, of course boats float. The rising tide floats all boats. So when something is really rising, you can jump on that tide. You can jump on that tsunami. And the mother of all tides and tsunamis right now is, guess what, AI. And I got to tell you, every day I say to myself, how, guy, did you ever do this kind of stuff before? How did you do this research? How did you do these summaries? How did you get this analysis of this 200-page book in 30 seconds? You know, how did you do that? How did you get people to help you compose stuff? How did you use it to generate images? So I got to believe that you understand this, right? So in, in e-commerce, well, one obvious application is personalization. I mean, yes, there's personalization now in e-commerce, but it could get so much better that, you know, let's get beyond, oh, you bought a printer. Pretty soon you're going to need toner cartridges. How about broader questions, right? So you looked at hiking shoes. Can we also sell you a tent? I mean, these kinds of things. Think about that. And that's just the personalization and, and the chat bots to help you shop. But what about all the other stuff? Like, 
if you're working for a company and you need to generate text and ads and images, all that with AI. Um, listen, I've been through several revolutions, the personal computer revolution, the internet revolution, the social media revolution, and now the AI revolution. And in my humble opinion, the AI revolution is bigger than any of those. It may be bigger than all of them combined, actually. I mean, I really think, I think AI is just absolute total game changer. So I, I can't tell you specifically what to do with AI, but I'm telling you, don't be in denial. You have got to jump on the AI tide. Now, I have one more thing I want to tell you. As I told you, I am a podcaster. I have a podcast called Remarkable People. I interview remarkable people like Jane Goodall, Steve Wozniak. And I've compiled a book of all the lessons that I've learned interviewing these people, filtered by my 40 years of experience in tech in Silicon Valley. The book is called Think Remarkable. And I promise you that if you want to make a difference in the world, this book will help you. It walks you through the three stages of growth, where you try new things, grit, where you have to apply yourself and work very hard, and then grace, which is what you do once you achieve success in order to create great karma, great positivity, to pay back society for your good fortune. Growth, grit, grace. Think remarkable. And that's it. So, and it's a short keynote. I'm not used to such a short keynote. So, five ways, five ways to stay on top of modern marketing, remarkable marketing. Alleviate pain, work backwards, go and see, go and be. Build what you want to use and ride the AI tide. That's it. I'm Guy Kawasaki. Thank you very much for listening to me. And now we're going to take some live Q&A. And let me tell you, it's really early in California. All right. Let's do this. Thanks. <laughs>